cross that. So we need to cross that to study something in low temperature. And liquid nitrogen is commonly used to cool down things. However, it is really, really cold. So it's uh, 321 Fahrenheit. It's really, really cold. <coughs> so it can only be stored in a high pressurized, highly pressurized cylinders. Uh, in order to keep it as a liquid, we need to um, pay attention to the low temperature and the high pressure safety. Um, so this is a very stupid behavior. And you will ask, why does somebody do this? Actually, this is not um, uh, unusual. Let's say you have an um, open door and you pour liquid nitrogen into it, and then you do something on top of it, and then you just drop something into it. And then uh, you happen to think about it, you just try to grab it. That's what will happen. So this is a common mistake. Just do something right on top of the open the door and drop it and try to grab it. So this is a consequence. And also, it may get exploded. Why would this happen? This is actually also very common because you have a liquid nitrogen cylinder. Just try to get some liquid nitrogen from, for example, from a nitrogen generator in our uh, chemistry department. And then you want to um, uh, move it here. So on the way, there is a kink. Your cylinder cannot get through it. What do you do? Push it. And then you just sort of fell down. Bomb. That's a consequence. It's a very common mistake. So just pay attention. It's very dangerous. But if you use it um, safely, it can help you a lot. We use a big to make uh, ice cream. It's very delicious. This is the, yeah. And then uh, sometimes you use a vacuum to for insulation because you want to do something in low temperature, in a room temperature environment. So you need to vacuum for insulation. And then you need to feed the roof to bring electricity, like or signals, gas, and the light in and out of your um, chamber, vacuum chamber. <coughs> it seals. Um, between uh, the interfaces. So here I have some examples. So this is a part of the vacuum chamber, and then this uh, is a gas feed room. So we need to connect these two, and then in between, this is called the uh, interface, in my definition, and then you need to seal this part. So this is called a flange. There are typical, typically, there are two types of flanges. One is called KA flange, the other is called CF flange. And the KA flange, so the basic concept for a flange is that you have two part, a chamber, and you feed through, and then there will be a uh, gasket in between. So to seal it. For the KA, the gasket is made of plastic, or we call it O-ring. It's a black thing here. And then because it's made of uh, sorry, made of rubber, then you cannot use it under the room temperature. It cannot hold high pressure. It, however, it is very easy to assemble. You just use um, this clamp. That's it. It's very simple. But for CF flange, we use the metal gasket. It can be baked, that means it can be heated up to a high temperature. It can also be used at low temperature. It can hold very high pressure, but it's very hard to assemble. Um, in order to assemble this one, you need to put a lot of screws here and tighten them. So we are going to use CF flange a lot. Here um, is how do you assemble a CF flange. The basic thing here is that at first you need to go into the clean room and wear gloves because uh, this is a vacuum chamber. Um, if you 
introduce open that dust here, then you cannot you reach high high vacuum. You may also de uh, destroy your vacuum pump. And then here shows you how can we reach um, uh, CO. So this is a, a gasket. It's normally made of a very soft copper. And then in the flange here, you, you may see it later. There is a blade in each side of the flange. Uh, then if you press these two, the blade will get into uh, bite into the gasket. This is how you uh, seal the whole thing. Then here you are, you're going to see there is a, a small groove in each side. You should put them together when you are, when you are tighten them, tighten the screws first. This is used to uh, to test the leakage of the whole chamber. So let's say you have a huge chamber down here, and you know where is the leak. So normally you use um, some uh, leak, leak test gas, normally it's helium, and just spray some helium here and see if you can test if you can <coughs> in a leakage detector. And this way you can uh, you, you can know which part of the chamber has a leak. So put them together. And then when you tight when you tighten the screws, you need to follow this sequence. So don't tight screws on one side first and tighten the screws on the other side first. This will create an unbalanced uh, um, the pressure to the gasket. So if you open the chamber, you'll see that the, the gasket is not evenly pressed. And then we have chambers, we have pipes, we have tubes. We need to connect, connect these two together. So to connect to the chamber, we have this uh, flange, CA flange or K flange. Well, for the tube side, we have also two standards, the switch lock and the VCR standard. So VCR is for ultra high vacuum. So we are going to use this a lot. However, switch lock is very convenient, so we will also use it uh, in other applic applications. Um, so for the switch lock, basically you will have a tube and then in the tube you have two ferrules and then you just um, uh, tighten them uh, with some um, uh, wrenches. Here, uh, for the VCR, you have um, this is very, the, the, the VCR is very similar to the CF flange. You have a gasket in between and then you just tighten, tighten these two parts together. Press the gasket. So here I show you a uh, plot of uh, switch lock picking assembly. So basically, at first you put these screws on um, the male part, and then you put your pipes into it, and then you start to tighten it. Um, and then after you tighten it, you should use a uh, spacer to check the space between the two screws. To keep, uh, if you tighten too much, and then next time you can you can hardly open it, or even if you open it, you cannot use it again. Um, so there is a dedicated a dedicated uh, space checker for you to check the space between uh, the screws. Um, and then you have uh, special tools to bend the pipes and to cut the pipes. So. This is a typical pipe here, and then to cut it, you have this. So you have the, this rotating blade here, then you have this part to press the pipe. So let's say you put your pipe in between here, and then just rotate it. Once you rotate one um, one round, tighten this to give some pressure and then rotate it again. After several rotations, uh, you will be cut into two. Uh, to bend it, we also have a special tool that is shown here. So you have your pipe going through one of this, and then you just bend it. Just bend it. So there is a degree here. Normally, you want to bend it.
going to give you more instruction when you really start to do something. 